The Black Death, not to be mistaken for the blue screen of death, threatened the burgeoning system in the middle of the 14th century. This new burgeoning middle class that we see developing in Italy and will kill between 25 and 50 percent of Europe's population. Now, the spread really starts in about 1347, and it's going to spread in Europe starting in the south, in Marseille and southern Italy, and then move north. And what you need to understand is the Black Death does not simply come once, it will actually move in waves, as if you're looking at ripples across a pond. Where does it come from? It's believed that it shows up from trade from the east. So it's coming across the Silk Road and entering into Europe, probably via ship from Constantinople uh, into some of these European ports. And there are three forms of bubonic plague. The most traditional and the one that you read about the most is actual bubonic plague, where the lymph nodes swell up, you get these massive black and violent violet sores that will be bubons. They're basically your lymph nodes swelling and nearly bursting. And this has a fairly low fatality rate, as we'll see. And this is caused by being bitten by a flea. Well, an infected flea. Then you have pneumonic plague. This one's particularly nasty because what happens is you get sick with bubonic plague, your family takes care of you, you cough, they take it into their lungs, and you get pneumonic plague, which is far more fatal. And then there's septic plague, which was particularly nasty at the time and very misunderstood. What happens is an infected flea happens to bite into a blood vessel, putting the bacteria directly into the blood, causing septic shock, uh, septicemia, basically bloodborne infection. And this kills rapidly. So instead of bubonic plague and pneumonic plague, where they kill over a span of a week or two, the septic plague can kill within hours. And we see different fatality rates. And this is part of what's so terrifying about the plague. You can get bubonic plague, 50% of people will survive, but then your family might all die because they get pneumonic plague. And if you get septic plague, you will die. There is no, there are no two ways about it, but they wouldn't know that at the time. They wouldn't go, oh my gosh, I have septic plague. They would just know that their fever spikes and their organs start shutting down. It's going to be very quick and something that they're not going to grasp entirely well. This is going to have a huge impact on Europe. You're going to see more and more of these images such as this called memento mori or reminders of death basically reminding people that you need to take care of your immortal soul because you could die at any time. And with something like septic plague around where you could die within hours, you're bitten around breakfast, you don't make it to dinner, this becomes a serious concern. And it pushes people back to the church. The church becomes far more important. We also see the construction of new hospitals. In a broader sense, we see a labor shortage, which will bring an end to the feudal system in Northern Europe, because suddenly you have too few peasants to work the land, and therefore you have to start paying them, and that defeats the purpose of the feudal system, where you pay food rent to be on the land in the first place. So suddenly they go from essentially slaves to the serfs as, well, labor, as someone who's being paid. We also see a reconsideration of life and legacy. Legacy becomes that much more important because you never know when the plague might hit your town and reconsidering your life. What is important to you? So we see people focusing on things like beauty and art as particularly important to them. They don't believe that this is going to save them in any way from the plague, but it does change their mindset significantly moving through the middle of the 14th century.